Okay, this week's portion is Vayetze, or and he left. It's primarily about Jacob starting his family. For this commentary, I'm going to look at Jacob's interaction with Laban. Today, I'm going to see what practical lessons we can learn from their relationship. I'd like to look at the aspect of a relationship where one person has authority over another. The principles we'll be discussing can apply to a boss and employee, a parent and child, or in a church setting to the leadership and the staff and volunteers. Most of you probably fall into both categories, especially if you have a younger brother or sister and an older brother or sister. In Genesis 29, 1 through 13, are about when Jacob met Rachel, how he rolled the stone from the well and watered her father's flock. This impressed her father Laban. Jacob stayed with them for a month before Laban asked what wages he would like. Genesis 29, 18. Now Jacob loved Rachel, so he said, I will serve you seven years for Rachel, your younger daughter. Jacob proposed a contract with his uncle Laban, seven years of work to marry his younger daughter, Rachel. Laban accepted Jacob's offer, and the contract was established. Verse 20. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and it seemed only a few days to him because of the love he had for her. Having a tangible goal makes labor seem less laborious. I think of the work involved in the sound booth on Shabbat and the work to set up and tear down the sanctuary. The Shabbat preparation and travel can be quite a chore, even when you're not scheduled to help. That's when we have to remember why we come, to praise, honor, and glorify God. For those who are helping out, we have to keep in mind that we're giving others the opportunity to do the same. Daniel has shared numerous accounts of people from other parts of the world tuning in and being blessed by what we do. It reminds me of the church in Acts. Chapter 6, verse 1. Now in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplying, there arose a complaint against the Hebrews by the Hellenists, because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. Then the twelve summoned the multitude of the disciples and said, It is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. So as the church grew, like we're seeing our church grow now, locally and abroad, a need arose for people to serve tables. Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Just like Laban hired Jacob after he demonstrated good attributes, the apostles looked for people of good reputation to serve. Notice the characteristics of the people they were looking for, full of the spirit and wisdom. And this was for waiting tables. Many in the church today would look at that as being beneath them. This has to be a lesson to us that no job is too small. Also, if we're not volunteering to help out, we should be questioning our characters. Is our reputation good? Are we wise? Yeshua was the greatest servant of all. So if we're filled with his Holy Spirit, we should desire to serve. Do you have a desire to serve? This is probably a good indicator of whether you're filled with the Holy Spirit. And the saying pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit. And Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte from Antioch, whom they set before the apostles. And when they had prayed, they laid hands on them. I'll bet serving tables wasn't any more glamorous of a task back then than it is now. But these men of faith and spirit were willing to do it. It's not always fun in the sound booth or coming in during the week to help out at the building. But let's see what happened when these people were willing to sacrifice of themselves. Then the word of God spread, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem. And a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith. In order for the word of God to spread, for more and more to come into the faith, we need servants. We need the hands and feet of the body to be active as hands and feet. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. Keep reading this chapter and you'll see how anointed Stephen was and how God used him. And he was chosen to serve tables. It's like Yeshua taught. Luke 16.10 If you are faithful in little things, 
you will be faithful in large ones. But if you are dishonest in little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. And if you are untrustworthy about worldly wealth, who will trust you with the true riches of heaven? And if you are not faithful with other people's things, why should you be trusted with things of your own? Now, we have a lot of Stevens here in name. And I know we have a lot of Stevens here in spirit, too. The Bible demonstrates that God uses people who are humble and willing to serve. Christians want to perform the great wonders and signs like Stephen. But how many are willing to do the serving beforehand like he did? Keep in mind that the men chosen to serve tables already had good reputations. They were faithful with even littler things. How about us? Are we showing up on time? Are we in the sanctuary listening, praying, and worshiping during service? And privately, are we praying and reading the word on our own? Let's go back to the portion. After Jacob confronted Laban for deceiving him with Leah instead of Rachel. Genesis 29, 26. And Laban said, It must not be done so in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Fulfill her week, and we will give you this one also for the service which you will serve with me still another seven years. Laban gave this information to Jacob after he had served for seven years. It's important for people in positions of authority to be honest and forthcoming with those they're overseeing. Verse 28, Then Jacob did so and fulfilled her week. So he gave him his daughter Rachel as wife also. Verse 30, Then Jacob also went into Rachel, and he also loved Rachel more than Leah. And he served with Laban still another seven years. Notice how Jacob got Rachel before serving the next seven years. Based on the original agreement, he had already put in the time for her. He could have just taken Rachel and left, but he went above and beyond and stayed to serve Laban another seven years. It's like Yeshua taught. Matthew 5, 38. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you not to resist an evil person, but whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other to him also. If anyone wants to sue you and take away your tunic, let him have your cloak also. And whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him who asks you, and from him who wants to borrow from you, do not turn away. Yeshua taught us to be merciful and subservient, like he is. This is the same principle Jacob lived by in regards to his relationship with Laban. Let's skip ahead to after Jacob completed the extra years of service. He had fulfilled his contract and asked Laban to let him leave. Laban testified that he was blessed through Jacob, and they made another deal. Jacob did really well through this new deal, and Laban and his family grew jealous. God called Jacob to return to his family. Genesis 31.4 So Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah to the field, to his flock, and said to them, I see your father's countenance, that it is not favorable toward me as before. But the God of my father has been with me, and you know that with all my might I have served your father. Yet your father has deceived me and changed my wages ten times, but God did not allow him to hurt me. After Laban took advantage of Jacob all those years, he ended up losing part of his fortune. Jacob was a faithful servant and put up with his master's dishonesty, like Jesus taught. But there is a breaking point. If you're not forthcoming with those under you, if you take advantage of them, you may lose them and more. The leadership of our church has to remember that those who are helping are volunteering their time and talents. We have to be thankful for their contributions and try not to overwork them. Moving ahead a little, verse 14. Then Rachel and Leah answered and said to him, Is there still any portion or inheritance for us in our father's house? Are we not considered strangers by him? For he has sold us and also completely consumed our money. For all these riches which God has taken from our Father are really ours and our children's. Now then, whatever God has said to you, do it. Remember that they were all family. Laban was blessed with Jacob's service, but ended up not only losing him, but also his daughters. Leadership has to keep the working conditions fair. Having authority is no excuse to berate or belittle those under you. We have to care for them and encourage them. If the servants would serve as Jacob did, and the masters would not govern like Laban did, there would be a lot more shalom in families, workplaces, and churches. Jacob left, and Laban eventually caught up with him. They made a covenant after some less-than-friendly discussion. 
verse 52. This heap is a witness, and this pillar is a witness, that I will not pass beyond this heap to you, and you will not pass beyond this heap and this pillar to me for harm. It got to the point where they had to make a covenant that they wouldn't hurt each other. It's quite a contrast from Genesis 29, 13, when Laban ran and kissed Jacob, but he brought this upon himself. If you read the dialogue, Laban doesn't apologize or repent. After all the time of Jacob being humble and submissive, Laban refused to do so in return. And because of this, Jacob gained everything Laban lost. Let's learn from this how to treat others. As Paul wrote, Ephesians 6, 5, Bond servants, be obedient to those who are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, and sincerity of heart as to Christ, not with eye service as men pleasers, but as bond servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with good will doing service as to the Lord and not to men. Knowing that whatever good anyone does, he will receive the same from the Lord, whether he is a slave or free. And you masters, do the same things to them, giving up threatening, knowing that your own master also is in heaven, and there is no partiality with him. Shabbat shalom.